What's going on? I just wanted to make a video, talk about what I think will do well at Worlds and what I think will win. So let's just get right into it. First of all, I'm going to go through and do the don't play this decks. It pains me to say don't play Gudra, but I really just don't think it is going to be good at all. Unfortunately, I don't think Greninja or the Applin deck will be any good. Lost Zone Charizard is probably unplayable. I think that this deck is really bad, but it definitely could do good. The uh, Roaring Moon deck, probably with the Greninja and the Water Energies. Every time I play it, it just feels like I'm just struggling to even attack. It, I don't know. I don't think it's very good. Great Tusk, I think, has a lot of problems right now. Ogre Pond deck, I probably would say don't play that either. I want to, I really want to say that there's something with Blissey, but there really just probably isn't. So I'll put Zorark in there. Um, Arctina, I don't think that that's really a world's winning deck at all. Gouging Fire, I think is trash as well. I don't know, some people seem to like it, but I just feel like the you're better off playing even this Roaring Moon deck or the dark Ogie Dogi kind of a deck or Maraidon. Really just any of the basic big hitting decks are better. Like Raging Bull is just strictly a better deck in my opinion. Um Dragapult Charizard, I think, could do well. I I unfortunately don't think that Blissey is very playable. All right, so now that leaves us these decks. Arc Armor Rouge, I think, could be like kind of a sleeper pick. The Armor Rouge EX is really powerful. So I wouldn't be surprised. Whoops. Actually, I'm just going to rename this one to day two because I think top 32 is a little like there's a big difference between don't play this and top 32 all right Dialga now Dialga let's see I gotta think about this kind of struggling to even think of why it was good before just kind of because you're going fast and you can skip a turn and make kind of insane comebacks. I could see it day twoing. I would be really surprised though if anyone made top cut with Dialga. So I'm going to say no on that. Lost Box. It's got a really rough Regidrago matchup. It has a rough Charizard matchup. It also can get pretty sacked by uh, Blocklax which is kind of the downfalls of it right now. I would say that it could top cut though. I was trying to think of how I would play it right now if I were to play it at Worlds. And after trying to make the list, because I would want like Roaring Moon to help deal with the Charizard matchup and two Sableyes because no one's playing Jirachi and then you want two Psychics and the list just gets really crowded really quickly. So I was also thinking playing like two or three Palpads. Three Palpad is kind of excessive, but Two might be good because really Reggie Drago, um, your biggest fear is them being able to actually use the Kirim for one energy and attack with it because that's like kind of a beefy one prize Pokemon. You can't just cram it and it's going to take three prizes. But even if they use it just to take one prize, it's going to throw off your prize trade quite a bit. And I was thinking if you could pal pad the choruses back in, that wouldn't be a threat. But after you start adding the Roaring Moon, the second Sableye and all that, it is very difficult to fit any extra cards like more pal pads in and also keep the deck consistent. So I'm going to go with could top cut. I'm guessing this is Lost Tina. It's kind of the same as Lost Box. It's probably the better version of Lost Box right now because it could uh, you could get a board of just like one, maybe two comfies and then just abyss seeking a couple times and just start swinging through through like Reggie Dragos or you know whatever definitely could be good so I will stick that there Pidgeot 
control. I'm not really like too much of a Pidgeot control connoisseur myself. I, don't, I think this meta is too open for control decks to be in a really good spot right now. There's just way too many good decks in my opinion. Maybe there's something, I don't know. I'm not the control, but I, I could definitely see it making day two though. Okie dokie. I could definitely see it making day two. I would be pretty shocked if it top cut the tournament at all. I haven't played the most with the deck. I played with it a little bit. Definitely feels like you could win games with it. Actually, it definitely could top cut. Yeah, we'll go with could top cut. Dragapult Zatu. I'm going to stick that in day two. Guardi. Broken deck. It's so good. Really, the only problem now is that Reggie Drago can just kind of cheese you. And then you might not be able to play the game, but... I think some of the better players will know how to get around that or figure out like text for the matchup. Even playing two mana fee like could just make it so they can't do that. But then you have to have two mana fee in play, so that's not the best option. But I'm sure that there's something that I'm not seeing. I think there's Guardi could definitely win. Charizard Dust Globs. I'm gonna stick that in could top cut. Good deck. The Duskull, Dusclops, Dusnor, whatever it is, makes the deck kind of clunky. It's a lot of extra spaces. So I'm going to say someone's going to top cut with just Charizard Pidgeot. That's going to be my bold prediction. I think just a streamlined Charizard deck is really good. You have a, The problem is I don't really think it can beat Regidrago. Maybe there's something that you could do to beat it. I don't know what it is. Maybe like Defiance ban gouging fire maybe I don't I don't know I don't play very much Charizard so I'm not the guy to figure it out but I do know the deck is really good it's good into most decks just has that one downfall I know from the Reggie Drago side into Charizard the matchup feels really easy yeah I don't know I'm gonna say that that will top cut Chi and Pao could make day two probably more likely than all those it's a fine deck you really have a hard time now into the Charizard Dustnor decks you have a hard time into um, Reggie Drago as well. You have, I think you have a hard time into Raging Bolt. I don't know, that really depends on what you start. Like if you start the Chi and Pao, Raging Bolt's probably gonna one shot you and then just win the prize trade from there. You have a bad Snorlax matchup, which I think is a really good deck. I don't know, Chi and Pao's in a rough spot right now. So I'm gonna say could day two, probably not gonna top cut at all though. Goldengo, I'm a Goldengo believer. I think it could top cut. I have not played the deck the most. I think the Pheasantipity is really good for it. It's one of those decks where it just seems so underwhelming, but then when you play it, it just gets there way more than it should. So we're going to say that it could top cut Snorlax. Um, it definitely will top cut. Could it win though? I'm going to say it can't win. Eh, that's hard. Snorlax just struggles so much with the top cut time rolls. If you don't know, but the way that time works in top cut, someone has to win so there's no ties. So if you're able to take a game off of the Snorlax deck, the Snorlax deck basically can't win the set in top cut because then they beat you the next game. You can drag that game out all the way to time. And then all you when time is called, all you have to do is be up in prize cards to win the matchup. So Snorlax is going to have a rough time winning, I would say. I think Raging Bolt will top cut. It's just a really strong deck. I think, I don't know, it's really hard to like put yourself in the position of if you're going to Worlds, what you would play. But I think one of the options that I would play is a Raging Bolt deck with Unfair Stamp with four Pokemon Catchers and four Trekking Shoes and probably some Jamming Towers. I don't know. I'd have to, I have to test the jamming towers a little more. That's the other thing. If I was going to worlds, I obviously would have tested more decks and locked in on something, but I think the jamming tower is really going to be your main way to beat Gardevoir. But the way that Gardevoir, I think it should be played probably with the hyper aroma. So you're not really shutting them down as hard by making it so they can't use their TM Evos. But I do have jamming towers in there right now. Maybe it should be Pokestop. I'm not really too convinced either way on the matter. Maybe it should even be Temple of Sinnoh for Lugia. Could be a split, who knows. 
Um, Reggie Drago. Reggie Drago could definitely win. But realistically, I I don't know. That's rough. I think it could win. It's just a really strong deck. It can beat anything. It has a lot of options right now. It just struggles with consistency. I think also it struggles with the Lugia matchup. So I'm going to just put it in Will Top Cut. Lugia will top cut. It will not. I don't think it'll win. It just it's not the kind of deck that can win. It it's just too clunky. I don't see it winning. I hope it doesn't win. Lugia had PTSD from the format when Lugia was too broken. So we'll stick it there. It's just it's got a good Charizard matchup. It's got a good Reggie Drago matchup. It's got a good Snorlax matchup. It can also it can beat Gardevoir. It can beat Raging Bolt. It also can just lose to itself against anything. So we're going to stick it there. Maridon could definitely top cut. I'm going to put that at the front of the list of could top cut. Because Maridon just seems to get there a lot. At least for a while when it first came out. And it was thought of as kind of a mid-tier deck. It was top cutting every tournament somehow. So I'll put it right there. Bennett. I think Bennett could top cut. I think... Binette could be a sleeper pick. The Binette Guardi with the Monkey Dories. You get two of them set up. You're doing like, what, 90 damage and item lock every turn. Item lock is really powerful into basically all of these decks except Lugia. If you if they get out, if they get their Archaeops in the discard pile, it really doesn't do anything. And even if you do item lock them before that, they can just um, read the wind away their Archaeops. So... That's like the one deck that's not super affected by it, but I think that is, I think Bennett could be good. I don't really know what could be added to the deck to make it better, but maybe someone's figured something out there. So I'm going to stick it there. All right, Ancient Box. I think Ancient Box is solid. It just gets kind of clunky. Sometimes it doesn't get off to much of a start. I, I don't know, I would be surprised if some of the best players brought Ancient Box, so I definitely see it making day two. I'd be really surprised if it made top cut. I'd be kind of surprised if some of the better players brought it because then if the Reggie Drago play, players play like Gudra, you have a really rough time into that. But I don't know, maybe they could also figure out that a lot of the times with um, the Ancient Box deck, you can just use your one of Great Tusk at the end of the game to mill out Reggie Drago, but I'm going to say it'll make day two because I don't think any of the best uh, player groups will choose to bring Ancient Box. Alright, the future deck. Um, I don't know. I think it could make day two. Maybe there's like a version with heavier Iron Thorns that could be solid. I just don't know if the matchup spread is the best right now. I imagine that Reggie Drago is almost unwinnable. But it is one of those things where you could just stick an Iron Thorns in the active spot. And kind of win the game off it. So I'm going to say could top cut. Probably less of a chance than Charizard Dustnor though. Raging Bolt. There, that's this deck. I don't know why it's on there twice. Iron Thorns. I don't know. It definitely could top cut because that's what Roth, Ross Cawthorn has been playing or played to NAIC at least. So just based on that alone, I'm going to put it first in the could top cut bracket. Dragapult, Charizard. I just don't know if there's really a reason to play that with Charizard Dustnor existing. I'm going to put it right there where it'll make day two. I don't know if it'll top cut though. Yeah, so that is what I think. Maybe this should go there. The Drago could definitely win. I think that these three are the most likely to win. But I don't really want to put three into that category. So I'm going to go with those two, I guess. Even though Snorlax is very unfavored in top cut format. I'm going to stick with it, I guess. Seems like a solid list. Alright, so I just wanted to throw out there 
the list that I would be between if I did end up playing in Worlds this year, but I did not. As soon as I found out it was in Hawaii, I knew that it wasn't the year for me. So I think my first pick would probably be this Guardi list. I think it's a good mix between both the Guardi archetypes, Drifloons, pretty good for like Drago and also one-shot Zards if you need to, and it can also help in the Lugia matchup as well. So this is probably would be my first pick. So probably my second choice would be this Reggie Drago list. I would either cut the Radiant Charizard or the Halucha though for a third boss or a Poppy, I think it's called, the supporter that lets you move two energy from one of your Pokemon to another one. I don't like the idea of having three really bad starters in the deck in the Kiram, the Halucha, and the Radiant Charizard. So I think I would get rid of one of those. Right now, I'm probably leaning towards the Radiant Charizard because most of the time at the end of the game, people are just going to be able to get around it with an Iron Bundle or obviously a boss's order. The only, the major upside to it is being able to hit that 250 number where nothing else other than Giratina can knock out like the basic EXs, the 220, the 210 HP Pokemon. So that's the one consideration for Charizard. All right, and my backup deck would be this Raging Bolt Unfair Stamp list with the four Pokemon catcher, just being able to go aggressive and have the best odds to take two prizes on the first turn of the game going second. You also have Teal Mask Ogre Pond that you can throw into play late game against Reggie Drago, or you can just kind of wall off Charizard with it if you need to. Iron Bundle is a great option in decks like this. Going with three Bolt, three Ogre Pond, because we do have uh, the two stretchers. The one card I really wanted to fit in here was the Heavy Ball, but I couldn't find a cup for it. I still just really don't know what it would be. So I just ended up leaving it out of there, just hoping to not prize two Bolt or two Ogre Pond. You know, that will happen sometimes. I'm going to do a video soon on the probabilities of like drawing cards off of research, the probabilities that you prize certain numbers of cards, things like that. But I think the odds in a best two of three that you prize two of your three Raging Bull and Ogre Pond two games in a row is pretty low. So I went with that. And you also just have the option in some of those matchups to just go lone Ogre Pond or take a prize with a Sandy Shock. So I figure there's decent odds that you're going to be fine with just the three. And those are the decks I would play in order. Gardevoir, Red Drago, and uh, Raging Bolt. I'll put the list for these in the description like so you can copy and paste them and try them in live they're like not super special lists they're just the ones that i would play and they're probably only a couple cards off of the normal list let me know what you guys think are you guys excited to watch worlds tomorrow um what do you think is going to win let me know in the comments um like or dislike and uh you know subscribe getting very close to 500 so that's really cool yeah take care and have a good one and have fun watching worlds